The first step to installing iTunes is downloading a copy of the program from the iTunes website. In order to get there, we're going to use an internet browser such as Internet Explorer that we have right here on the desktop. And you can get to this program either here on the desktop or by going Start Programs Internet Explorer. And if it's not there, you can use the little arrows at the bottom of the list to make it make the whole list pop up and there it is. So in the Start menu, we can just single click it with the left mouse button or on the desktop, we can double click it with the left mouse button to open up Internet Explorer. And here we're just going to maximize it now. This is the new version of Internet Explorer, so yours might look a little different. And now to get to iTunes, we're just going to single click with the left mouse button in the top bar here. This is the address bar. And we're going to type www.itunes.com. Hitting enter will bring us to apple.com backslash iTunes. Apple is the company that writes the program iTunes, and we have it right here in the top left corner. Download iTunes, single clicking with the left mouse button on this icon will bring us to the download page and everything's happening on the left right here. We have two options, either Windows or Macintosh. We're going to pick Windows and then two little check boxes here asking if we want flyers or if we want to be contacted by email. On checking these two boxes, we do not have to provide our email address and we just click download. Now once you click that button, a window pops up and it prompts you with three options. The first one being run in order to run the program directly from the website, which is a little bit slow and not recommended. You can save, which will save a copy of the program directly on your computer in case you want to use it some other time, which is always a good idea. And the third button, which is cancel, in case you've changed your mind and uh, you no longer want to download the program. We're going to click save in this case with, the left, with a single click of the left mouse button. Now it asks us where we'd like to save it left hand side we have some quick options here and we can also look at the drop down menu we want to save it on the desktop so I'm going to single click the desktop button on the left hand side and here I am that's going to be my destination for this file it asks us what we want to call it and it's already written something in for us and that's great and we can just click save and now it's going to take about 40 seconds in order to download this program it's about 36.2 megabytes, so it might take a little while. So we're just going to wait for it to download. In the meantime, we no longer need the Apple website, so we're just going to click Close. That's a single left click of the mouse button in the top right corner where there's that red X. And now Internet Explorer is downloading the file from the website to the desktop, which is what we're looking at in the background here. Great, so the program is done. You'll notice that we have three options now. We can either run the program, which makes it very easy if you don't want to go hunting for it. We can open the folder, so it'll go find where it is for us, so we can uh, take the appropriate action that we choose. And then we can just simply close, which is what we'll do, just so you can see where it is. It's here on the iTunes right there, where the desktop is, and double-clicking it will start the installation. And here we have Windows preparing to install. You have a little welcome guide here. You can click next on that. A contract that you have to agree to, and then you can click next. So you're presented with two options. The first one being install desktop shortcuts, which is always nice because then you have a little shortcut on the desktop and you can access iTunes quickly. The second one being use iTunes as the default player for audio files. You want to uncheck this box. And the reason why we want this box unchecked is that uh, uh, if that were not the case, any file you would download from the internet, be it uh, news commentary or the sound of a door squeaking, all of these would inadvertently be copied to your iTunes music folder, which might get a little bit messy. So it's nice to just keep iTunes for your music collection and use another uh, media player such as Windows Media Player to uh, play uh, the host of all generic files that you may download. Finally, at the bottom here, default iTunes language, we're just going to keep it in English, and destination folder, which we need not worry about because the default destination folder is fine. So we can go ahead and click install, and now it's installing on the system.
we notice here on the left that the, it's gone ahead and created that desktop shortcut that we asked for. So the installation is done and we have a third and last option here, open iTunes after install or exit. This is just to save you some time and it's great, you just click finish and right away iTunes will open up. And here we have iTunes. So we can just close it now and in the future you'll notice that you can start right here from the desktop double clicking with the left mouse button will open up the program again